Welcome, new reintegration caseworker. The work you do is essential for sustainable reintegration of returnees. In this video, we will present the top 10 things you need to know in order to be successful in your job. Here we go. Number one, reintegration is a multi-dimensional process that requires an integrated approach. This approach takes into consideration the economic, social and psychosocial factors impacting on reintegration across individual, community and structural levels. In the Reintegration Handbook, you can find a lot of practical guidance on how to implement this approach and has useful tips and tools for reintegration staff. You can also take an online course to take you through the contents of the Reintegration Handbook. Number two, building an open and trusting relationship with the returnee is key. Counseling is a great way of doing this, which serves as a basis for delivering effective and sustainable reintegration assistance. The Reintegration Handbook shows you the different steps and gives tips on how to provide empathetic and supportive reintegration counseling. Number three, reintegration starts before the actual return to the country of origin. You can help facilitate the process by coordinating closely with colleagues in the host countries. For example, you can participate in pre-return counselling or gather information on cases before they arrive. Number four, timely assessment of the returnee's conditions allows you to address their needs accordingly. Victims of trafficking, unaccompanied and separated children, returnees with health needs, or returnees vulnerable to violence, exploitation and abuse are considered vulnerable and need special care and guidance. You can learn more from the IOM Handbook on Protection and Assistance for Migrants Vulnerable to Violence, Exploitation and Abuse. Number 5. Each returnee should lead their own reintegration process. The reintegration assistance you provide intends to empower returnees and to create an environment where they can decide for themselves how best to use reintegration support. Number six, it is not possible to address all of the returnees needs. Being open and transparent to the returnees you work with about available reintegration support and about their eligibility requirements and limits will help to build a relationship of trust. Together, you can also identify possible resources they can resort to and the steps they can take to start addressing their needs. Number seven, as a reintegration caseworker, you are the link between the returnees and the areas they are returning to. It is important to know what services and opportunities are available in that area. This can be done by mapping services and by having regular contact with local stakeholders. Referrals to relevant services help to create that link and to respond to the returnees' needs. Number eight, returnees go through highs and lows in their reintegration process. Regular follow-up is essential. Through discussions with the returnee around the natural progression of emotions surrounding the process, they learn to cope with the highs and lows they might experience. Number nine, Discuss the end of reintegration assistance with returnees early on, starting from the first counselling session. Helping returnees to set up a reintegration plan that also prepares them for the time after reintegration assistance comes to an end. Where possible, you should identify available additional services and make referrals in a timely manner to allow for sufficient transition. Number 10. There are many resources available. There's a dedicated repository with the most commonly used tools for reintegration programming. The Return and Reintegration platform offers hundreds of resources for reintegration practitioners, hosts regular webinars, and promotes debates and exchanges through a public community of practice. 